And now, live from the Snack Boy Studios in Laurel, Maryland, it's snack time. Well, hello and welcome to Snack Boy. That's right, the 300 second snack that is between lunch and dinner at 315 daily, Monday through Friday, to bring you a little sustenance free entertainment to get you through your day. Well, today I'm telling you a story that actually, I have to say, is starting to, starting to choke me up a little bit. I need a, I need a second. You're saying to yourself, Terry, what's wrong? Terry, this is not like you. You're always in such a good mood. Well, here's the problem today, everybody. There has been an attempt of censorship on Snack Boy, not only from the public, not from the government, not from the man, no, from my own family. That's right, you're saying, who in your family would try to censor you, Snack Boy? You couldn't harm a fly. You are a nice guy. Well, there is. My parents found out what, what I was going to do on today's show, and they tried to put their foot down. It's about my brother and his beautiful new bride, Kate. Well, Kenny and Kate have only been married for about five months now, and on their honeymoon, a story happened that has caused more than a little embarrassment for Kenny, even more embarrassment for his beautiful bride, Kate, and maybe even more for my parents, Ron and Sue. Well, Ron and Sue caught me today trying to sneak out of the house with pictures of my brother and his bride. Well, they said, Terry, what have you got there? And I said, well, it's a picture of Kenny and a picture of Kate. And here are a picture of Kenny and Kate on their honeymoon. And they said, no. My mother said, no, Terry, you are not going to tell the 911 story, are you? I forbid it. I said, Mom, I'm telling the 911 story. She said, uh-uh. How, you know, oh, you know, that'll embarrass them. And you know what, ladies and gentlemen? Yes, they took the photos away. Yes, I don't have any visual aids to show you. Well, I have a couple of drawings, of course. But I had real pictures. But, but I will not be censored. I will not be silenced. This is a free country. And if I want to give you an embarrassing snack that implicates the guilty parties, I'm going to bring it to you. You need to hear it, and I need to say it. Well, let's get on to the story. Enough of the setup. Picture it. Five months ago, the honeymoon of the beautiful Kate and Kenny, and they went to a little uh, cabin in Ocean City, Maryland for free for their honeymoon. A couple from my parents' church said that they could use it for the weekend, and they, they, they did. Anyway, on their honeymoon, it was raining for three days straight. It even rained on their wedding day. When they got there, the place was flooded. They couldn't even go to the boardwalk. So they were basically trapped inside this little place for for, for a weekend, well, what is a honeymoon newlywed to do? I'll tell you what. I'm not exactly sure what they did, but I can tell you the story the way I heard it. I got a phone call from my mother. Terry, I'm rushing to the beach. I got to go. I said, Mom, where are you going? Well, it's about your brother and his wife. Kate is in the hospital. I said, Mom, why put my, my sister-in-law in the hospital? And she said, an, uh, an accident. And I said, what? She said, well, I, I can't really tell you. Well, my curiosity was piqued, and I hope yours has piqued a little bit too. This is what happened. An ambulance came to pick up my brother's beautiful wife who had a neck brace on her. And uh, I said, why did the ambulance have to come and pick up Kate? And my mom said, well, let's just say they called the hospital and uh, she had had a slight accident. She had had a slight fall. I said, mom, where, what did she fall off of? Well, well, your sister-in-law fell off the bed. Okay, what made her fall off the bed? Well, we don't know. Kenny says they were wrestling. They were just wrestling on the bed, and uh, they called the ambulance. Well, here's the detail they left out. My brother and his wife were wrestling, doing something on their honeymoon on their bed, right? When, uh, when the ambulance came to take her to the hospital, he had to put her panties and her bra on. Okay. Well, it sounds like tough love and love hurts really does factor into the story because she was on the floor, twisted and contorted in this weird position like this, right? Kenny and her had been doing something where she was flung naked through the air and landed on the neck on her on, on the floor on her neck. Now, I want you all to tell me if I've done the right thing by telling you this story. Personally, I think there's nothing wrong with telling a cute little anecdote about tough love, but my family, when they, when they dial in for this snack boy and they see it, there is going to be hell to pay. Oh, I got an email. Now, I, uh, producers, how much time do I have? We have plenty of time for this email. Okay, dear Terry, I enjoyed your, your show on your neighbor Karen slash Amber very much. What's going to happen between her and the phone sex guy? Well, here is what's going to happen between Amber and the phone sex guy. 
if you remember correctly in the last show, my neighbor has called one of those, uh, those numbers where they will write one of your term papers, your, your long college papers, but they charge you hundreds of dollars. She didn't feel like writing it, so she's paying hundreds of dollars for this guy in Texas to write her paper. But the guy who's writing her paper and her started doing phone sex with each other uh, in the middle of the night. And now she's going to meet him. He's planning on getting on a plane down here to meet her. And the problem is this. Uh, she has no idea what he looks like. He's been giving her the wrong name. He says his name was Chris when it's really Steve. I'm only telling you this because it's the truth. He's been lying to her, and she's taking this for love, this, this, this guy she's having phone sex with. And she wants me, Snack Boy, to sit in on their first date in case he ends up being some crazy rapist or something. Well, I don't approve of the whole situation. I have nothing against phone sex, but I do have something, a problem when you take the fantasy and you cross it into reality. And you know it, they, they're not going to be what each other expects. And how healthy could this be? A, the guy has a criminal job. Uh, he's doing papers for people, and B, he's telling him the wrong name. C, she's lying about herself to him uh, over the phone long distance, and I don't want any part of this. Uh.